5 Mysterious Disappearances from Rhode Island Rhode Island is known for its beautiful beaches, great seafood, and rich history. But just like every other area in the world, there are dark things about this place you won't find on any tourist websites. Despite its rather small size, the Ocean State has its fair share of strange and scary mysteries. Here are five mysterious disappearances from Rhode Island. Number five, Doreen Marfio. No matter who you are or what you do in life, if something happens to your spouse, you can always expect the police to consider you as a suspect. The vanishing of Doreen Marfio is one of those cases. The 34-year-old woman had been living in Johnston, Rhode Island with her husband, Stephen Marfio. The couple had been together for seven years and those close to them can attest to how rocky their relationship actually was. On March 29, 1990, Stephen reportedly took a 70-minute lunch break from work. Many of his co-workers wondered that day about his unusually long break when he would just typically take around 30 minutes. The man claimed that he went home and had lunch with his wife before ultimately getting back to work. When he returned home that day, he said that Doreen was already gone. He claimed that he was not aware that the woman was missing, and so it was only on the 31st, two days later, that he notified police. During the investigation, he said that a suitcase, her clothes, and $600 of cash were missing from their home. He then implied to authorities that his wife had ran away because of an affair. Stephen also admitted that he once hired a private detective to follow her. However, he couldn't provide any evidence of Doreen's infidelity. At this point, the police had reasons to believe that Stephen had something to do with the woman's disappearance, yet they couldn't directly link him to the case out of lack of proof. Three months after Doreen vanished, the police received two typewritten letters. One read that Stephen had supposedly strangled his wife and threw her body in a pond in Providence. The second one said that the victim was purportedly having extramarital affairs with a few of her co-workers. The names of the men were even listed within the letter. A little digging led detectives to Stephen's mother's house where the letters were written. Authorities believed that the husband had typed them out. Instead of answering their queries about the letters, Stephen chose to hire an attorney to respond for him. From that point on, he then stopped cooperating within the entire investigation. On July 30th, 1999, nine years after this incident, Mr. Marfeo returned home from a trip. On that day, he fatally shot his ex-girlfriend, Laura Vincent, and wounded her current boyfriend, Salvatore Puleo. The shooter then immediately fled the scene and drove to a remote area in Connecticut where he shot himself. A suicide note was found nearby and was addressed to his mother. There he said that he felt guilty about Doreen's disappearance However, it contained no further information about the circumstances as well as the whereabouts of the woman. Taking this hint, police searched the nearby reservoir from where Stephen committed suicide and they were hoping to find his wife's body, but the search resulted in nothing. Doreen Marfeo remains missing to this day. While Stephen was never charged in Doreen's disappearance, Authorities strongly believe that he may have had something to do with it. Unfortunately, though, he's no longer around to either refute or confirm the allegations. And unless someone else is found responsible for the crime, her disappearance and rumored death will persist to be a mystery. Number 4. Wojciech Pudali Friends of the ones who would be the first to notice if you're in a difficult situation and would be there to help you out. Wojciech Fudali had exactly this kind of group, however, there's only so much that they could do for him. On December 6, 2008, 
Fudali left his Newport apartment to stay with his friends on the West Bay. These were the people whom he spent time with as a student at the University of Rhode Island. While he was with them, they noticed him acting strangely. They'd always known him to be taking anti-anxiety medication, but they were able to notice that he was skipping his meds prior to an unexpected incident, and this got them worried. Later that evening, they heard loud noises coming from the room where Fudali was staying. They checked on him and left accordingly soon after he calmed down, but that would be the last time they saw the 22-year-old. He just basically vanished out of thin air after that. Later on, an eyewitness told detectives she saw Fudali sitting on a dock. They found a book lying around there, and it was open to a page about being one with the sea. Investigators presumed he could have gone into the water, but just before they could embark on a search, another witness claimed he saw the man running through the marsh wearing almost nothing. It was very cold that day, and they feared he may not survive the harsh temperatures for very long with no clothes on. This time, the police employed canine units and helicopters to sweep the area. Unfortunately, though, they found no trace of the man. A year later, Fudali's parents received a phone call. It was the voice of a child asking if he was around. Police traced the call back to a woman in Puerto Rico, It was rather strange, to say the least, for her to know that number and the fact that the child sought for him by his name. A week passed when his mother found a post-it note in their kitchen with the message saying, I miss you. Love, Wojciech. I am at the bet. Everything about the letter looked rather strange. The words were misspelt, and even his name was written wrong. A handwriting analyst was made to examine the note, but the results were rather inconclusive. Wojciech Fudali remains missing to this day. There have been a lot of theories regarding this case. Did the young man have a mental breakdown and flee to Puerto Rico? Could he have suffered severe injuries causing him to forget his identity? Or could there be some more sinister reason for his disappearance? Number three, Katrina McVeigh. On May 3rd, 1992, Katrina McVeigh was last seen getting into a car near Front and Lincoln Streets in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. She was known to be heavily involved in drugs and prostitution at the time of her disappearance. The mother of three had also just gotten out of an abusive relationship Meanwhile, the 27-year-old was stripped of her custody rights to all her children. Her family, including her parents, didn't know that she had been missing for quite some time already. It was only on June 17, 1992, six weeks since she was last seen, that her family reported her missing. Considering her situation, authorities suspected foul play could have been involved. They even believed her to be deceased already, however, they had yet to find any evidence to back up that theory. Through the years, there emerged a number of disturbing developments about the case. This included the time when Charlotte Solnier, the missing woman's mother, received a call from a stranger who simply said, you will never find her, which of course referred to McVeigh. Her brother also told police that she may have been buried on the banks of the Blackstone River. Apparently, McVeigh's disappearance wouldn't be the only unsolved mystery to occur in their town of Woonsocket. In 1993, a woman named Sharon Plass was found dead in Blackstone River. Two years later, a 28-year-old, Megan Paul, was found stabbed to death in her apartment on North Main Street. In 2001, another Woonsocket resident, Cindy Roberts, went missing and was later found murdered. Her body was discovered in an area close to where McVeigh vanished. Interestingly, Roberts, like McVeigh, had also been involved in drug and prostitution issues. Considering this, police theorized that there might be a serial killer prowling the streets of Woonsocket. This was proven correct 
when serial murderer Jeffrey S. Mellot pleaded guilty to the aforementioned murders. However, the convict has yet to reveal the places where he supposedly buried his victims. Moreover, it's yet to be found out if McVeigh was among those unlucky enough who perished at his hands. Number 2. Brian Nissenfeld For most students, the first year in college will always be an adjustment period. For the New Jersey resident, Brian Nissenfeld, college life proved to be more than just that. On February 6, 1997, the 18-year-old architecture student got out of a class at Roger Williams College and just disappeared out of everyone's sight. At first, it seemed like the young man had just simply taken off for a self-imposed break. Friends and acquaintances had become aware of Nissenfeld's growing homesickness and his tendencies to become emotionally upset over just about anything. It was only after six days since he took off from that class that college officials were able to notify the student's parents. Officers from the Bristol Police Department were also called to look into the matter, and their initial findings suggested that Nissenfeld ran away for reasons that have yet to be known. But six months after the incident, a woman and her daughter who were walking along Hogs Beach discovered a boot with a human foot still stuck inside it. A subsequent DNA test revealed that the bone and the remains later found nearby actually belonged to the college kid. Investigators surmised that Nissenfeld may have slipped while walking on some rocks, fell into the water, and died. They also suspected that he may have committed suicide by jumping off the nearby Mount Hope Bridge. A further look into the case led detectives to some disturbing information. Witnesses said that the teenager had actually been receiving threats from a former schoolmate at Roger Williams, whom he knew during his first semester. It was not stated, though, if he was friends with or romantically involved with this other male student. Reports also indicated that just days before Nissenfeld vanished, this mystery student allegedly threatened him via a series of phone calls. He said that he would be going back to the campus to hurt him. As of now, no one knows the circumstances that led the student into the horrible situation he was in. Was it an accident, a suicide, or perhaps a murder? The police have yet to find the rest of his body or any evidence that may indicate the nature of his death. So as of now, the case remains inconclusive. Meanwhile, the Rhode Island State Police are urging anyone to report if they know anything about the disappearance and eventual death of Brian Nissenfeld. Number 1. Adam Emery Anyone from Rhode Island would probably have heard and perhaps have wondered about the case of Adam Emery. Is he still alive or already dead? The bizarreness of this case began one day in August of 1990. Adam and his wife, Elena Emery, and two other friends were at a roadside food stand in Rocky Point Park. Suddenly, a vehicle sideswiped the couple's car. The man became enraged and followed who he believed to have caused the accident. After prompting the other car to stop, witnesses said that they saw Adam run to the driver's side and fatally stab the driver through the heart. The events got even more terrifying. It was found out that the pursuer had actually chased after the wrong car and thereby stabbed the wrong person. The victim, a 20-year-old, Jay Bass, was pronounced dead at the scene. Emery was consequently convicted of second-degree murder for the crime in 1993. Witnesses during his trial said that they were disturbed to see the accused showing little to no remorse for his actions. But for some surprising turn of events, the judge decided to let Emery get out on bail. The order was for him to get his affairs in order before he would be sentenced. On that same night that he was temporarily freed, Emery took his wife out for dinner. 
The couple was later spotted going into a sporting goods store. And upon investigations, they were found to be purchasing diving weights. The next thing heard about them was that their car was abandoned on the Newport Bridge. Investigators initially thought that the pair had committed suicide together. But an underwater search was conducted and their efforts didn't amount to anything. It was only in late 1994 when they found Elena's body. It was washed ashore, however her husband's remains have never been recovered. The questions going on around that time, and even to this day, is did Adam really jump from that bridge with his wife? And if he did indeed jump, did he try to save himself from drowning? Authorities said that typically when suicides occur at that bridge, the bodies would be found sooner rather than later. Considering this, the FBI put Emery on their most wanted list, and his name remains there to this day. As much as everyone wants to find Adam Emery, the family and loved ones of his victim are also yearning for closure. Whether they find him alive or if his remains are recovered, the Basses deserve to see justice for the crime committed against their beloved. So there were five mysterious disappearances from Rhode Island. Every town, city, or state will always have their fair share of tragic and mysterious happenings and Rhode Island is no exception. These five are just but the tip of the many other disappearances and unsolved cases that have yet to be resolved. Considering this, will you be visiting the Ocean State anytime soon? If you guys enjoyed this video, then please subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. We have new videos coming out every single week that you guys are gonna love. Thanks for tuning in, I'll see you soon.